Hey, good morning, and may God bless you and keep you once again on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. Again, we thank God for who he is. Uh, we, we, don't, we, we never understand his purpose. We never understand why he does certain things, why we are in the position that we are in, why we are in the station of life that we're in, uh, why we are still here. Scripture said we're not even supposed to be here, right? But we do thank God for who he is because he said that he would give us abundant life for all those who believe and trust in him who really rely on him, who love him, who have an intimate relationship with him, who have accepted him as their Lord and personal Savior. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be coming out of 2 Samuel, again, the 17th chapter, verses 17 through 23. 2 Samuel 17, 17 to 23. And the name of this passage or the name of this sermon today is The Woman by the Well in Baharim. Now, you know, oftentimes in Scripture, it's like, oh, everyone knows if you've been to any Sunday school class, if you've been to church three times in the past year, everyone knows about the woman at the well, the woman of Samaria, who said, oh, come see a man who told me everything about myself, right? Because he came and he first asked for a drink of water. He being a Jew, she being a Samaritan, they're not supposed to speak to anyone, right? But yet he asked for water. And she, you know, pretty much said, you know, where is this water? I'm paraphrasing. He said, you know, I have uh, eternal water. You know, you'll never thirst again if you drink of the water that I have. So once again, in Scripture, if you go back to the Old Testament, now we're going to find another episode of the woman by the well, the woman by the well in Baharim. Let's go to God in prayer first. Dear God, thank you for allowing your presence to be felt today. Thank you for waking us up to see another day today. We want to thank you, Lord, because you have been so good to us, more better to us than we have to ourselves and to our neighbors. So Lord, watch over us and bless us and keep us. And I pray that a message will fall from heaven as it always does. And we will always be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen, amen, amen. For the night is far spent and the day is at hand. So let us cast off the works of darkness and we will put on the armor of light. The woman by the well in Baha Reim. Hmm. Before I get started, let me read a passage of scripture just, just to let us know where we're at today in our society today, how we are feeling this morning, right? How many of us may be feeling this morning, right? Scripture tells us that finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor, hmm, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not, for we wrestle not, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That means organized rebellion, organized divisions, coming from spiritual wickedness in high places. So keep that in mind as you move about today and move about uh, the next several weeks, right? As you uh, hear and see things, right, in this world, right, in the physical, right? But do know that these things that are in the physical, right, are revealed and have already been revealed in the invisible or in the spiritual, right? That these are small things, right? that we are not to get so caught up in these things, thinking that it's a big deal, right? Do know that these are small things in the presence of God. Do know that you should be wrestling. And the question of the day as I was driving over today was, what am I wrestling with? And maybe today when you sit down at the kitchen table or the dinner table with your families or you're sitting at a stoplight with your loved one, right? Ask yourself, what am I wrestling with? And why don't I let that go? For we wrestle against, right? That means that we are always wrestling with something, right? If we're wrestling with something, we should have the ability, right, and the power to withstand it and be able to, right, defeat it. So oftentimes we are wrestling against things that we cannot defeat in the physical. That the only way we're able to defeat these things is in the spiritual. So let us not wrestle against things that are under, that are out of our control, Right? That there are things out there that, that are above, that are bigger than ourselves. I was going back and forth with my fraternity brothers this morning, right? This, these things in this world are bigger than ourselves, right? And as I digress, and one day you'll 
hear me preach on, right? Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, right? He was, you know, he bigger than himself, one of the most powerful men on the planet at the time. The Jews were, uh, you know, 70 years of captivity, right? Prophet Daniel, right? Many of you are, uh, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Anyway, so they had this, 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 this idol that people had to worship every time the music played, the cymbals, the flute, and the harps, all these things played. The people had to bow down, and if not, they were thrown into the fiery furnace, okay? But over time, right, because Nebuchadnezzar said that, you know, I am more powerful than your God, ooh, that was not a good thing. He ended up being chained, right, and set out into a field, into a pasture where he ate grass like a cow. And then he came to repentance because he figured, you know what? Your God is bigger than mine. I apologize, right? I am going to release you guys, right? You're going back to your homeland. I mean, things change. Things begin to change once he realized, the most powerful man on the planet, that this was much bigger than himself. And I just want you to think about that in your day-to-day -day as you move through your day today and the rest of this week and as you conversate with other individuals that this is a small thing. All these things that you're seeing today are just small things. These wars are small things. They are meant to happen because God has ordained them to happen for a specific purpose during this season. But they are small things and we shouldn't get caught up in them as believers, right? We should walk around with blinders on, right? Giving God grace, giving, give, giving God praise, right? In the most difficult situations. Because these are the things we wrestle against. We're not wrestling against people. We're wrestling against spiritual wickedness <laughs> in high places, very organized, very methodical about taking your heart, soul, and mind away from you. Because the devil's here, here, to, here to, to kill, steal, and destroy. That is his main purpose, to wipe out anything that looks like Jesus Christ or the creation of anything that he has created. So continue to have the love in your heart and share the love in your heart towards your fellow man and your neighbor, and you'll be just fine. The woman by the well in Baharim, right? Here are some key points that we should take from this, right? Titus 1 and 15 says, And to the pure things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. So some of the key points that you need, we need to take from this. This is a powerful, powerful scripture. At first I thought, okay, this is a gloss over, something I read very quickly. But all scripture is meant for the edification, for the understanding, for the correction of all people. That's what the entire scripture from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation is about. Correction for God's people. Reve Revelation meaning to reveal, right? Genesis meaning first, Revelation meaning to reveal. So this is about, as we talked about on last week with my brother Craig, God's protection, God's divine purpose, God's plan of salvation, and God's faithful people. Also, the preservation of God's people. God will preserve you, right? Not only the Jew, but also the Greek, right? The Gentile as well. God will preserve you, right? Because there's a man named Jesus who went to the cross and died for you, that you may be a part of him, to be with him, to be joined with him forever, when you close your eyes for the last time. Let's read this passage of scripture in its entirety. It's powerful. So Jonathan, as we've been talking about, right, I'm excited about this. As, as, as we've been talking about, right, we know that King David has been on the run. He's in the wilderness now. He is trying to avoid having any confrontation with his son Absalom, who's trying to take over the throne of Israel. He doesn't deserve it, but he's trying to take it anyway. And that's what we find also in society today, where we see people who don't deserve much, right? But people are trying to give them things, even though God has not appointed or ordained those things to be given to. They haven't earned that, right? They haven't earned that throne. They haven't earned that responsibility. They haven't earned it, but they just want to take it by any means necessary. David is trying to not come in contact with his son. He doesn't want to destroy his son because David is a warrior. He is he has a relationship with God, right? He's trying to outlast his son. I don't want to harm you, right? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so I, I, I'm trying to avoid you, right? God has given me this throne and you're trying to take it away, but I'm, I'm giving some space between us. So now there's these two spies, right? Jonathan and Ahamaz. 
Then we're staying in in Rogel, right? In Rogel means in Rogel means the springs or fresh water. It's one of the main sources of water, and it's south of Jerusalem. One of the main water sources, the springs, right, of Israel. And it says a female servant was to go and inform them, and they were to go and tell King David, for they could not risk being seen entering into the city. These are two spies, right? Here we go. But a young man saw them and ran and told Absalom. And so the two of them left at once and went to the house of a man in Baharim, right? Baharim means, uh, to get this, Baharim means stability. It means moving forward. It means that you uh, obtain information and instead of standing still, that you be in constant movement. <laughs> Isn't that ironic about this story as we move forward? Uh, he, he had a, a, a well in his courtyard, right? Fresh drinking water. And they climbed down into it. And his wife took a covering, whoo, the woman at Baha Ring. And she spread it out over the opening of the well and scattered grain over it. No one knew anything about it. The woman at the well at Baha Ring. I wish we knew her name. I'm sure we will see her again, right, when we get to heaven. Be great to listen to her, right? Because she is risking her life, the, the, the life of her husband, the life of all of her servants, the people in that community by hiding these two spies of David. Hmm. When Absalom's men came to the woman in, at the house, they asked, where are Ahimez and Jonathan? And the woman answered them, they crossed over the brook. And the men searched, but found no one, so they returned back to Jerusalem. The woman at Bahari. After they had gone, the two climbed out of the well and went to inform King David. And they said to him, set out and cross the river at once. Right? Ahathabel has has, has advised such and such against you, right? Remember, Ahathothel used to be allied to David, but turned his back. He is now someone who is seeking power and authority, even though he doesn't deserve it. He feels that, at the, uh, you know, when Absalom had came to take over the throne, right, that he felt like, oh, let me get allied with, with Absalom now because David is no longer with us. So let me go and, 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 and nudge up, right, get close to Absalom so I can be one of his faithful servants, right? A soothsayer, someone who goes and informs you, gives you good information about things, tells you what to do strategically, right? So Ahathothel had, had advised such and such against you. So David and his people in verse 22 with him set out and crossed the Jordan by daybreak, Baharim, move, be in constant movement, be stable, be in movement, move forward. By daybreak, no one was left who had not crossed the Jordan. That means they had all crossed over the Jordan by daybreak. So when Ahaphazel saw that his advice had not been followed, he saddled his donkey and set out for his house in his hometown. He put his house in order, and then he hung himself. <laughs> so he died and was buried in his father's tomb. Let's get this right. So, so once again, we're hearing something very similar to the New Testament, right, when we think about Judas, right, and the betrayal of Jesus Christ. You set out to do something, right, that you feel that is right, right? People pay you money for it, or you feel like you're allied with the right people, and all of a sudden you find out that it's not going to work out, and because now you're not allied to either one, right, David or Absalom, you put your house in order and kill yourself, mainly because now Absalom doesn't trust you. He'll kill you if he becomes king of Israel. David doesn't trust you, so if he comes back out of the wilderness and becomes the king of, get, sits back on his throne, he's going to kill you. So he goes back, puts his house in order, right? And he hangs himself. Baharim, as we stated, means movement or finding stability and moving forward, right? And so we find this woman, right, in Enrogel, right, who has placed some, uh, you know, probably some, uh, some type of tarp, maybe, or some animal skin or something like that, and places things on top of that well, right? Grain and stuff like that, and hides these men of God. What we find in this passage of scripture is that, again, the divine will of God, his divine purpose, his divine order of things can never be toppled nor constrained. Keep this in mind. This passage of scripture cannot be overlooked as a small matter. In fact, this one event is this, this divine privilege, if you may, if it, that, that separates the world's reality from that of a spiritual reality. We always see things in movie and it always works out fine, not unless there's a a second or third segment of it. But we always notice in those 120 minutes, like everything always works out fine, right? So that is how we see, uh, that, that is a theology of today, right? When we go to the movies, it's going to work out, right? We have a hero, 
they may get brazed, right? They may, you know, something will happen, their house will get blown up or something like that, right? But it always works out, right? But not in the spiritual. In the spiritual, God's divine purpose, right, will always overcome evil. And we can end it right there. The world's reality, as we stated, would place David's spies, Jonathan and Ahimaaz, right where man would have them to be in a vulnerable place that could eventually expose where David and his army might be in the wilderness and that of his people. But God, God had a plan. Amen. In fact, that is the template of his divine will and purpose that we are not privy to, privy to his blueprint. Uh, we're not privy to the plans of God. He just wants us to follow in his foot, footsteps. He wants us to follow in his Footprints. Just, just trust in me, right? You're in a, you're in a dark place right now, but, but just, 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 just hang on to me. Just hang on to the loins of my girdle, right? Just, just touch the hem of my garment. Just be in a, in this dark place with me, and I'm going to lead you and guide you, right? But I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but it's going to be okay, right? God had a plan, right? So throughout the scriptures, we find God hiding, right, a young Hebrew boy in a basket. Carelessly and carefully floating down the Nile River, encased in a basket, a basket that could cause him to live life a little bit longer than thousands of other boys who would be put to death under the hand of Pharaoh. But God, God had a plan when he took Jacob and hid him in the wilderness for a season out of the reach of his brother Esau, who was trying to kill him. God preserved Jacob by giving him wives and land and property. And because of him, we have the 12 tribes of Israel, the tribe of Judah, the seed of which Jesus Christ would eventually come. There was also a time when God, God had a plan about this, this, little, this little girl, and she was pregnant by the Holy Ghost. And it was, time, it was tax season, and her and her husband Joseph right, had to go, and there was no room for them in the end in the city of David, right? And we do find that in the city of David that there was a cave, a hiding place for Mary and Joseph to hide and have this child. And within a few hours, they are told by the Holy Ghost, by angels, right, to flee the city of David because they are trying to kill you. But God is always protecting us, putting us in these places, right, these dark places, right, for his divine purpose and his divine will. You're Secret prayer closet is another place for divine purpose, uh, for him to reveal himself to you, right? And yes, God took a harlot by the name of Rahab who lived up against the wall in her own community. And because of her willingness to trust in the people of God who spared, right, who spared and from her seed, a man by the name of Jesus Christ would eventually come. Rahab, a prostitute, is a great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Everyone else was killed in this entire city, but Rahab and her family were spared. God always has a plan. It, 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 we can't figure it out. We don't know what it is or, or how it's going to work out, but he always works it out in his favor because he wants us to look back on it and say, you didn't do this. I did this. And even today, while I stand here today, I realize it's like I have done nothing without God. Nothing. Absolutely Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I have no control, no power over anything that has happened in my life. God has had a plan. So on today, we have two highly trained spies who are on a mission to obtain important tactical information regarding the armies of Absalom, who were seeking to destroy David because God hid them. David escapes and places time and space between him and Absalom, as we talked about, Absalom's army. So he would not have to face Absalom, but continue to love him, amen, from a distance until the will of God would be revealed. Let me put some space. Let me continue to go up to the Mount of Olives. Let me continue to go up to all these different places and pray for Absalom that no hurt, harm, or danger will come over him because he has lost his mind. And I pray that he will come to his senses. So let's unpack. Now, verse 17, we find that a young servant girl informs our two spies, Jonathan and Ahimez, of the plan of Absalom. And because of the servant girl, the two traveled to Baharim where there was a well in the courtyard and the two went down. And I would like to take a moment to think about the significance of that well. As we talked, Jesus once met a woman at the well, Samaritan, right? Of which her entire life was revealed unto her by Jesus. By conversation and conversion, right? Everything took place in that moment, not just for herself, but all those people in that community of Samaria. So that they would believe in Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. 
In other words, she ran and told the people, come see a man. Come see a man who told me everything. Left her pot. Come, come see a man. But not only that, that the well was a representation of everlasting and eternal peace with God. That, that, that though we see the well as a spring to simply quench our, our thirst, God has provided a well, a place where we can find peace and be hidden within the bosom of his eternal grace and abundant mercy. Jonathan and Ahimaaz and the woman at the well. Verse 19 says that the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground corn thereon and the, and the things, thing, and this thing was not known. And so this is how God will cover us from the world. He will reach in and, and place a, a shield of protection around our hearts. He will, in other words, lead me beside still waters. And, and though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for he is with me. His rod and his staff will always comfort me from today and until eternity. For when we are under the protection of God, he will protect us and, and, and this thing will not be known to man. You have a personal relationship with God. He will cover you and protect you. The Holy Ghost will cover you and protect you, right? And, and, and inform you of the things, give you a spirit of discernment to be able to go out into this dying world that will soon fade away, right? And protect you so that you may be able to be with him in paradise forever for all eternity. And when Absalom in verse 20 servants came to the woman's house, they inquired of where Jonathan and Ahimaaz might be. And the woman informed them that they went over to the brook of water. Yeah, she told a lie, but the Holy Ghost, <laughs> right? How does she know? Hey, maybe some of them have crossed over. I don't know, but this was ordained by God. Verse 21, now when the two spies made their way to David, they told him that Ahithophel had counseled against him. And with that, we must arise and go quickly over the water. As we stated, David has already moved over, right, the brook. Verse 22, so David and his people arose and quickly got over the Jordan. And the scripture makes it clear that by morning, there wasn't a soul in sight of David's people, for they had all crossed over. That's a sermon in itself, right? The crossing over, right? That we listen and listen to the will of God and that we act on it accordingly, right? in Rogel, right, Baharim, that we act on the water, the living water that will save us, right, that will protect us, that will guide us, that will shield us, right, and give us comfort during those times when people are trying to destroy us. Psalm 27, 5 and 8 says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. David repeats that. He shall set me up on high places, up on a rock, right? And now shall mine head be lifted up above my enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou said, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. David is adamant about going to God and giving him praise that Within his heart, he knows that God will set him on a high place, that he will protect him and guide him and comfort him. Verse 23, and when Ahathophel saw that his counsel was not followed, because as you remember, Ahathophel, his plan was, hey, let me take 12,000 and go get him right now. But God had another plan. He changed the heart of Absalom to listen to another man, right? And because of that, Ahathophel, everything he says has nothing, has no meaning whatsoever. So he rose, right? And he got up on his donkey, right? And he went to his house, to his city, and he put his household in order and he hung himself and he died. So again, we find a story of shame and betrayal that speaks to the heart of all men. As we say that, like Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus, Ahithophel knows that since he has betrayed David and his plan, his own personal prophecy about how to destroy David is not taken in consideration by Absalom. I don't need you in my administration anymore, right? He has no choice but to put his house in order and just kill himself. Judas was between a rock and a hard place. I lost grace with God, right? I've taken this blood money. I'm... People will know me throughout all of Israel as this one who betrayed the Messiah. I have no place to turn. But this does not give credence in 2024 for any of us to give up because it's 
because God's grace and abundant mercy, that whatever you have been through, whatever you have done in this life, he has forgiven you if you go to him and ask for forgiveness. He is just and willing to forgive you because he gave his life for you. So he can't go back and scratch his head and says, I'm recanting. No, no, no. I died for you, so I have to forgive you. So when we choose to not follow the oracle of God, as I close, the transcendent word of truth from God, and we choose to listen to men and self, that plan will eventually fail. It may look good right now, but it will eventually fail if you don't have God on your side. Proverbs 30 and 32, if, if thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. In the end, the divine will of God is to ensure that David, the young boy who was anointed by the prophet Samuel, sent by God, that his seed would remain on the throne in, his, in this season. And again, in a world and life to come from now until eternity. Because of God, right? He is everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. The woman by the well in Bahari. May God bless her and keep her for standing up and doing what was right in the sight of God. And may God bless Jonathan and Ahimez who put their lives on the line to run and tell David, right, that, that Absalom is coming. We must flee now. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, thank you for allowing your presence to be felt today. We are all women at the well, Lord Jesus. We are all those who should be doing what is right in the sight of God. Because he is the orchestrator. He is the creator of all things invisible and visible. We are all on a timetable here on this earth, and we will have to give an account of all the things that we have done and said while we are here. Let us make sure that those things were in accordance of the oracles of God. If you're living in a dark place, if you're doing things that you know within your, you know within your heart are dark, fall to your knees now and ask God for forgiveness. Create in me, as David said, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Don't forsake me. Don't leave me, God. Lord, bless us and keep us on this day. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.